be the quote for today. Take action based on where you want to be, not based on where you are. So a kind of motivation to strive for excellence, to strive for perfection. But we need to um, imagine this perfect vision of us as a teacher and in what direction we would like to move. And hopefully listening to the voices of our students would give us a magical push towards that direction. So what we're going to do today, there are four steps that I planned. We will take a look at the students' responses and analyze them. What is their idea about teaching online and modern teachers, what we can change, find ways how to make our lessons more engaging for the students, create a list of teachers' responsibilities, because if we speak about modern teachers, what do they expect and what is actually expected and are considered to be the teachers' responsibilities, and we will watch a video from a sample lesson and analyze that lesson. So these are uh, some charts collecting data, what this presentation is based on. So we have 84 students who answered this and you can see the range. Uh, so like adults, young adults was the majority. 17, 25 years, years of age, then teenagers, the second biggest group. Next to them are 10, 13 years old and um, adults 14%. Um, so based on their answers, I will tell you what we can change, or what uh, would be the direction for improvement. And speaking about teachers' responsibilities, what do you as teacher believe you are responsible to do before the lesson, during the lesson, and after the lesson. I will give you this uh, link and individually would like you to brainstorm and add your ideas in the table. So we'll spend five minutes brainstorming. Teachers' responsibilities. Before the lesson, a teacher is responsible to. During the lesson, a teacher is responsible to. And after the lesson, a teacher is responsible to. Like, you know, some official document where they are stated, where do you take them from? I don't know if you do, but there is a book which is called the Danielson Framework for Lesson Analysis. And that's actually a system that is used in the United States to analyze the quality of the lesson. The teacher's responsibilities are divided into four groups and there are 22 components in total what the teacher is responsible for. So when somebody comes and analyzes, evaluates the lesson, they follow this framework. And the teacher knows in what direction to move and they have an easy kind of checklist that they can use to evaluate that. So I would like to share now that framework of teachers' responsibilities, which are divided into four groups, planning and preparation, classroom environment, professional responsibilities, and instruction. And you take a look at what you have written and at what is there in that table. And as you will see, it is numbered like 1A, 2B, 4C, and so on. And right next to the responsibilities that you introduced that number and letter, if you can find the coincidence. And I will add that also in the uh, Word document. And we'll project it on my screen.
So what is that connection? Learning and preparation comes with demonstrating knowledge of content and pedagogy. So you should be knowledgeable about what you are teaching. Demonstrating knowledge of students. You know their needs and interests, their background, where do they come from. Setting instructional outcomes. So we will do this, and the result will be this. Demonstrating knowledge of resources. You know what you will need, what kind of resources to pass that knowledge to the student. Designing coherent instruction, designing student assessments. That's connected with planning and preparation. Classroom environment. Creating an environment of respect and rapport. Establishing a culture for learning. Managing classroom procedures. Managing student behavior. Organizing physical space. If you can move the desks, if you can move the chairs, if they will stand up during the activities or you ask them to be always seated, this is about classroom environment. Professional responsibilities. Reflecting on teaching. And someone mentioned that after lessons. So that's what you do. That's what's expected. That's your responsibility. For A, maintaining accurate records, keeping those diaries and notes that you write, of lesson plans, communicating with families, calling the parents and reporting their progress or success, failures, that's also teacher's responsibility. Participating in a professional community, what we're doing now, growing and developing professional, showing professionalism, instruction, communicating with students, using questioning and discussion techniques, engaging students in learning, which was mentioned in your table, Using assessment and instruction also was mentioned, demonstrating flexibility and responsiveness. Like being open, being ready to change the lesson plan, not to be rigid. So what do we have here? To tune up in the good mood, where would you put that according to the framework? Did you find them? To what group or category does that belong? Make all students present at, present at the lesson, participate, encourage students. Where does that belong? Classroom environment. Classroom environment, like rapport and respect, classroom procedures managing, or, or what? Yeah. Using questioning and discussion techniques, maybe, because you involve them, then it's about instruction. Yes, if you think that's about the environment, then it's classroom environment, classroom management. So having this handy um, table, I think it's easier for you to know what is your responsibility and what you should think of when you come in your class and teach your students. And it's a kind of um, expectations that the students also have from the teacher. And they answered the question in that poll that we shared, modern teacher should, how would you finish the, um, the sentence? And as I told you, there were 84 students who replied, but analyzing their responses, we can come up with four main domains, areas, what they expect from the teacher. 40% said that they expect that the teacher should listen, apologize, respect. And they started enumerating some qualities which have no connection with the subject itself, but somehow are connected with the teacher's personality. Empathetic, help, be patient, be friendly, be calm, be open, have some kind of advice. So 40% expect this uh, relationship or pay more attention to the uh, learning environment, the atmosphere, the rapport that you have with your students. 32% uh, said that it's very important to capture attention, know my interest, my needs, know how to motivate me, know how to guide me, give me interesting homework. And this is connected with methods and management, how you organize your lessons, how you structure your lessons from methodological point of view. And 28% mentioned going digital. 
So they expect that a modern teacher would know how to use some interactive online tools, how to use Zoom, how to use quizzes, how to use these digital things. That's what they expect. What do you expect from modern students? That's my question. And we will go for two, three minutes in breakout rooms and you need to come up in, in your group with like top three expectations, but try to predict the answers of the students. What do you think they believe is expected from them? Yes, they are top three answers. Ira, how many rooms do you need? So we have 13 people, let's say three, four rooms. Three rooms would be enough. Okay. So what do you expect from the students? Predict top three answers. What do you think are top three predictions, expectations from your students? Uh, group one, one expectation. Yelena, Alice, Anna, you were in the first group. What do you think? We had one, uh, one expectation that uh, Alice said that she would like some students not to be noisy, to not disturb the lessons, especially when they are online. Okay, so... We expect from the students to be polite. Cla classroom management is a classroom. problem. Okay, follow the rules. Uh, group number two, what do you think is your expectation? One expectation that you discussed, yes? Who were in the second group because we do not, uh, we didn't pay attention to the number which group we were in Maria, we you were help? in the fourth let us oh help. yeah sorry Elena. Yeah. can you share one expectation from your group group number four yeah responsible students should be responsible and uh, i can add one more self-motivated okay what about the other groups anything to add to the list engaged also uh, what is expected from the students? To engage themselves? Yes, as we do today. To stay to engaged. Participate, to have initiative. Okay. Stay engaged. Stay engaged and focused, yes. So that's what is expected. That's their responsibility. Let's see if we guessed. So the students answered the same question. What do you think is expected from you, from the students? And this is what they said, some screenshots. But as there were 84 responses, analyzing all of them, it was easy to find some kind of pattern, what they believe is their responsibility. So number one, what is expected from the student is to show autonomy in learning. Like teachers expect them to be autonomous learners, self-motivated as you said self-engaged be engaged stay engaged yes and they know about that and that was top number one answer the second in the top is be digitally literate as we moved online it's also expected from them to know which button to push which link to follow how to edit how to add a sticker note how to add the text so that's also expected from them and they know it and they can do that Number three, cope with lots of workload. Lots of them complain that there is a lot of homework, that there is a lot of reading, a lot of assignments that they have to complete. And it's like over the roof, too much sometimes for them. And that's expected for them to do. That's the responsibility, I guess, that you mentioned. And then they started enumerating some uh, personal things, like be helpful, be open to provide a hand of help to a helping hand to your colleague, be tolerant, be attentive, be responsible, control emotions. So um, some personal qualities that show that they are humans, just like with the teachers. And it's also a part of this um, rapport and building learning culture. So knowing these responsibilities, um, knowing the teacher's responsibilities, 
what you don't like about your lessons. And again, you can see some screenshots. I will give you some time to look through them. And analyzing this 84 responses, what you don't like about lessons, again, it was easy to see some kind of pattern, repeated things that lots of them mentioned. And you see an interesting topics. Most of them are boring. All the lessons are the same. Excessive drudgery and dryness. So if we try to put them in a kind of scheme or table, this is what we get. 40% said that the lessons are not interesting. 27% too much pressure or too much homework, lack of understanding, like they didn't get the material, but they had to do a lot of homework. That's demotivating. 13% uh, not friendly atmosphere. Some were saying that teachers sometimes lose control in class and they are stressed and it makes them stressed so they cannot concentrate and it's hard for them to study. There were some mentions of that. Then 10% technical difficulties and the information that they bring in, the teachers bring in class is not very useful. Technical difficulties when they moved online. So they couldn't share the document, they couldn't connect something, and it affected the uh, progress of the lesson and the way that they disliked such lessons. So what can we do to make our lessons more engaging and address these dissatisfactions, let's say, from the um, students' um, side? As you see, 40% not interesting. So they are not engaged in the lesson. How to make that um, problem disappear? First of all, you need to think about the rapport. So the relationship between teacher and student. Uh, lots of information, lots of times we practiced at our sessions that we need to move the focus to the learner, not the teacher, not the sage on the stage, I used to say, but make it learner-centered. Try to find out about their interests. Try to give them more responsibilities during the lesson. And the key word here, I put the choice. So how to start building this report step by step. We can start with giving them choice. And you see some variants. Would you like to write a story or do a grammar exercise at home? Speaking about homework, when they say it's a lot of workload. You know, as the teacher, that uh, writing a story, they still will practice that grammar construction, for example, that you did. Or doing that a grammar exercise from the textbook, they still will drill those constructions. So let's pretend that they have a choice. Actually, they do have a choice, but still they will do what is required from them. They will do what you want. Do that grammar exercise. Uh, we can ask them to share their opinion, which will um, contribute to this uh, classroom atmosphere. Like, what can you use this skill for? What, what, where can you use this information that we discussed today? How can you use this? Why would you use this? Have a class as an open space for discussion and sharing opinions. What do you think we can do to practice it? Um, I asked a lot this question with my um, students who come to me like for private lessons because I know that they have lots of homework to do from school, but parents want them to practice English, so they need something else to do at home. And I asked my students, like, what, what do you think you can do? Today we started this describing adjectives. So today we started present perfect. What do you think you can do? How can you practice it? And they come with ideas. And when they suggest, well, I can create a comic book, so I can create a movie, or I can tell a story, I can come up with something. They choose it. Okay, you said you can do it. So for me, I achieved my goal. I gave them extra thing, but it's a kind of choice, their responsibility, because they chose it. So that's one way how we can do it. Another thing how we can make the tasks more engaging, it's pair work or group work or some kind of projects. They're, they don't feel alone that they have to complete all of this by themselves, but they can rely on some peers, on their colleagues. So it also is a kind of motivating factor. And the one thing that I now recommend to all the teachers and all the parents is this series of books, how to talk to kids so they can listen or how to talk to kids so they can learn. Um, it comes like a parental guide 
started as a parental guide, over 3 million copies sold, but then they started to apply the same techniques in school. Because like school is the second family and we as teachers are the second parents. And they found out that the same techniques work with children who are students and they somehow transform these methods into classroom environment. So it comes with uh, how to praise, how to motivate, how to share responsibilities in different sections and with practical advice. And it comes with like a comic strips illustration. So if you don't have time to read the entire book, you can just look through the pictures and you will get the idea and some practical things how you can praise, for example, a student. So uh, a quote to continue my thought is that students who enjoy what they are doing are much less likely to be disruptive, are much less likely to create some disturbance in class, noise, as you said, or uh, lose the focus or lose the interest. So we have to think of how to engage them, what can bring interest to them and how they, they can be a part of the class. And I want us to observe a lesson how this teacher engages the students and what techniques he uses. So we will watch the video and write down what you notice. Prepare your piece of paper and pen because that would be your personal notes. Don't share them in the chat. Pay attention to what the students are saying and what the teacher is saying in response. Um, what are they doing during the lessons? Actions, words. In what way is the teacher engaging students in learning? What techniques and tricks of the trade is he using to make the lesson engaging, to make the lesson alive? And I will need to stop share. And share again with the sound. Okay. I can copy the um, questions in the chat. So you will have them in front of you. Question three. The link. Let's watch it together. What would you oh. guys say to teachers Second, I thought they if they're not teachers. getting high quality work? Could they learn something from this? And what would you say to them that they could do differently in their classrooms? This is a story called Austin's Butterfly. And it's a true story about a first grade boy and his name is Austin, and he goes to school, or used to go to school, in a town called Boise, Idaho. And in his class in Boise, Idaho, they were studying butterflies, and he had to do a project. His job in first grade was to draw a butterfly, and this is the butterfly that he picked. Austin had to use this photograph as his model, and he had to draw an accurate scientific drawing of this butterfly. This is called a tiger swallowtail. I knew it! Did, can you tell Toby why it's called tiger? Because it kind of has the stripes of the tiger yeah. right there. Good. So here was Austin's job. He was supposed to do a scientific drawing of that butterfly. But remember, Austin was only in first grade. And you know what he did? He forgot to look like a scientist carefully. He got his paper, and he just started to draw the image of a butterfly that he had in his head. And he wasn't looking like a scientist. And so this is what he drew. Whoa. It's not bad, and it is a butterfly, but does it look exactly like this? No. No, it doesn't yet. It doesn't look exactly like this yet. And so they didn't look at this and say, good, Austin, you're done. They said, Austin, good start. Now we can start giving you critiques so you can do a second draft and make it better, and a third draft and make it better, and you can make it much, much closer to this, and he was ready to go. All of the first graders in his 
critique group sat on the floor like you guys are, and they decided to split their advice into two kinds. First, just the shape of the wings. And then when the shape was right, they'd give him advice about the pattern inside the wings. Alia, what would you say? We can make it much pointier. Good. These wings could be much pointier. Who else would add something? Atak, what would you say? About the angle, because not to be mean about yes. the angle, it's just not exact, so... Um, okay, so show me. Come on up here, Atak. Show me where, what you would ask him to do slightly differently. Um, like to make it a little longer. Longer where? Draw like, where you would do it. Right there. Okay, so pull this out longer. Yeah. That's very specific, Atak. Thank you. Jamila, what would you say? It's like... Triangle? Good. Jamil, I love that. So you're saying more like a triangle shape. And I agree. Well, you know what? Those first graders came up with most of those same ideas. And you know what Austin said? He said, okay, I'll go try. And he went back to his seat and he drew this. Wow. Does this look more like a triangle? Yeah. 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 Did he go out further, like Atak was suggesting? Yes. Yeah. Did he add some jaggedness here? Yes. Like Cindy, did he get rid of that bottom thing? Yes. So he did listen to his friends, and he made it better. It's not perfect. Toby, what would you say? I'd say don't put those little tail things so pointed in. I'd say put them more pointed down. Good. Okay, and Ethan, what would you say? Um, I think you should make the wings like... Just not like just like Okay, he listened to his friends and they said, this is really a lot better, Austin. That second draft really is better. Yeah, maybe he can make a third one. Good, maybe he could make a third draft. Yeah. And so he did this draft. That's his third draft. That's his third draft, Hadley. That's just right. Elijah, what do you notice there? Well, one wing's more pointed than the other and that side is a little bit higher than Good. Coburn? Um, right here, it doesn't have the inside thing still. Ah, okay. Needs a little bit more of that notch. So, do you think maybe he should do a fourth draft? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's just what he said. He said, shoot, okay, I got round again. I'll go back and do a fourth draft. He listened. He listened. Does it look more even like Elijah was suggesting? Yes. Yeah, and does it look like it's coming out a little sharper, like yes. Cindy was suggesting? Mm -hmm. And like Attack was saying, it's a little, the angle is, looks a little better. So now Austin was feeling really good. He said, am I ready to add some pattern? And they said, okay, why don't you try adding some of the pattern? And he did. Oh, he's good at it. He is so good. And then they said, Austin, you're ready for color. Let's look at his last draft. And what do you think? Did it come out really good? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about how much progress he made? And Tak, what would you say about his progress? He made like a lot of progress. He persevered doing it. His friends were honest with him. What was it about the kinds of advice that they gave that allowed him to get better each time? Hassan? Well, they told him what was wrong about it. Did they say it's just wrong, or were they more specific? Than that? They were more specific, but they weren't mean about it. Great. Yeah, Hadley. They made six drafts. And so, is that a, is that something that other kids should learn from? What yeah. we learn? What should we learn from that? We can make other drafts if it's not right. Good. So, if you can keep, if it's not right, you can keep doing more drafts to make it better. You just don't use the things in your head. You want to use a um, sharp eye. Good. He used the eyes of a scientist. Great. Okay. That was our video lesson observation. I saw you were taking notes. Now we will go again in groups for five, seven minutes. And you will share your notes with your colleagues. Three questions. What did you see? We will have again three groups.
Irina, unmute your microphone, please. Irina. Yes, thank you. So back to the video and back to the quotes. Students who enjoy what they are doing are much less likely to be disrupted. What did you notice in this class? Was there any discipline problem? How were the students engaged? Um, any volunteers? Uh, yeah, if I may start. Uh, of course, we didn't um, notice any uh, disruptive moments because students were really engaged and uh, they felt like their opinion uh, is important and they could contribute to uh, help that child yeah, improve his um, drawing. Yeah, So they started feeling uh, proud that they can help improve and uh, um, they were focusing on um, what was good but at the same time they were telling what could be improved so that the student yeah in that way, um, situation this situation the child uh, would not get you know um let's I'm say di yeah Just stressed mm -hmm. yeah or demotivated yeah so we as teachers should do the same. We should focus on what um, on the positive moments, but at the same time um, tell them um, what needs to be improved. Mm -hmm. But also great. they told not only what needs, but how to how? improve it. Yes. Make it longer. Change the angle. Something specific. Yes. Yes, and at the same time they were giving. Um, I, I like the fact that um, um, the expectation from that child was not to draw from the first time a perfect butterfly. Mm -hmm. So he was asked, draw a butterfly. And then he was given guidance all, this, uh, uh, all the way. Yeah? At every step, he was giving, um, given some guidance and some ideas how to improve. Mm -hmm. And that uh, um, is um, what I really liked about that video. Okay, thank you. Any other engaging techniques that you can mention? I would like to add that uh, one more important thing is that the is spoiled yes <laughs> destroyed but the teacher knew what kind of questions in what uh, moment to ask them so it's very important to to bring those pictures everything was built in such a way like uh, like a show like a story mm -hmm. interactive story that made the the students not to be passive uh, listeners but to be um, actors actors who are those who will decide is the picture good or it has to be improved. And also the teacher tried to focus not on the ugly duckling as we can see the feedback from our work. Not the ugly duckling, but the beautiful uh, rabbit. So he focused on the competence of the students, not on the errors or mistakes that they produce uh, I mean, the student who drew the, the butterfly. Mm -hmm. A lot of okay. good, positive approaches for teaching. What about the students' reactions? How did they participate? How did they show that they are engaged? They uh, felt them very important with themselves because uh, they give solutions. They just uh, share uh, personal opinion, how to solve this problem, what to add, what to uh, maybe to cut or to do in a diff in another way. And uh, they feel free and I think very curious <laughs> uh, to see. Why do you think so? Because uh, they were curious to see another work, another just what this one, uh -huh. uh, what what here they should uh, just uh, add, uh, what maybe oh it's better, oh it's nicer. <laughs> just and, uh -huh. uh, this made them to be curious and interested. What is going on? 
right, the body language that we could really, oh, I knew it, he listened. Yes, so the body language and the words that they said. And I think okay. these are, anything else these that are, you noticed? Mm -hmm. And I think these are, um, how to say correctly, an example of modern future students. <laughs> Because they feel okay. free, they, they have um, a relaxing uh, sitting, yes, and discuss, uh, and why not? We should try it in our classes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe, yes. So, yes, in our group, uh, group number one, I was, we also mentioned about the sitting position. That's, that's unusual for our classrooms. That's what habitual in their daily routine. So they sit on the floor. And as Elena said, the lesson was turned into a kind of storytelling. So it wasn't just teaching at the blackboard and showing the pictures, but the students were involved through telling the stories. One thing that I like also mentioned in our group was the graded vocabulary. So the teacher knew that he comes to the fourth grader, so he comes to the second graders, and he graded his language. He made it sound interesting. Like, Use your vision of a scientist. Pretend that you are in the shoes of a scientist, something like that. Uh, no interruptions, Alice mentioned. So when the students were speaking, the teacher was listening and encouraging. Yes? Yeah. And when he uh, elicited their answers, he addressed them by name. Toby, what do you think? Edison, what is your opinion? I think the angle should be like this. Okay, come and show. Yes, so not only just telling, but showing some total physical response, <laughs> so-called. Very specific feedback. Feedback. Personal encouragement also was said in our uh, group, and ideas belong to the students. The teacher doesn't explain, but elicits the information. Anything else that you found curious? So we are now moving to the next step. If you are silent now, you're going to be silent forever. <laughs> okay, so we analyzed the uh, lesson we had a look at the uh, responses from the students, what they expect from a modern teacher, what are responsibilities of a teacher according to the Danielson's framework. And now uh, let's reflect a little bit about today's session. What did you learn today? What was your personal discovery? How can you use what you learned? And what would you like to explore further? You can type, you can speak if you are brave, unmute yourself, and we can discuss about your discoveries. I can say something. <laughs> uh, I think I agree uh, to uh, to have uh, my students' opinion uh, according to the homework, according to the task of the test, uh, um, and what was said about it. Because uh, we just have a goal. And uh, the teacher's goal is to achieve it. But how, in what way, we can do it in various ways. And uh, I agree that uh, students may, may choose. Why not? We need to give them the chance to, to have a choice to, to select. Uh, so that was something new for you? It was, it was not new. It was uh, what uh, I had applied. Uh, just this year and I am going to to apply in, in the future because I liked it mm -hmm. and I know mostly of uh, from the teacher from uh, my school just say me what what why you should you ask them what they want <laughs> because I like to to hear their opinions why not <laughs> I am the teacher no just I am a teacher right. friend I am a teacher friend yes. for them 
And the yeah. chances are that they will complete the task that they have chosen, increase. They are higher than yes. if you just yes. tell them, do this. Yes. yes. Okay. My discovery is criticizing in positive manner prompts the progress. Yes. So when your criticism is not just for the sake of criticism, but for the sake of getting a better thing, a better final result. And one thing that I noticed also here for my uh, personal use, how the teacher was giving criticism and he was adding a three letter magical word in Yen. Like it's not perfect yet. We are not there yet. If you don't know this yet, but you are on this way of discovery. So it's like not very discouraging, but opens the door for the students to go and search further the information. The power of yet, yes. And maybe so like you... on the third question to discuss, to explore further those books that you gave. So that would be something nice to read when the school year finishes and think about, I guess. Right. Yes, and please, can you just show um, once again, because I didn't manage to have a screenshot. Okay, thank you. I talked how I read how to talk to kids so they can uh, listen. This was the first um, series, the first edition of the book. I can just turn around my laptop, I don't know. Uh, but like I have some sticky notes and it's all over my place. So I have child's cooperation, some useful phrases I can say enforceable statements, some neutralizing argument when they so say, I don't know what to do, present self esteem instead of punishment, what I can do. <laughs> and I just refer, even during my online lessons, I have already made phrases, uh -huh, okay, he didn't do his homework, let's find out what. Okay, he completed this exercise, what can I tell him? And I have some ready-made phrases, which I try to push into my teaching vocabulary. Because sometimes it's also very are difficult they, uh, for me. Are they available online? Yes, you can find these books online in PDF format. You just browse through them. Must read for teachers. So on this note, I say thank you for being active today, for discovering the depths of teaching excellence together with me and uh, being more open to listen to your students now and taking their opinion into account when you plan your lessons. If you have questions, it's time to ask. And you can use the chat, I guess. We'll stay connected. You can contact me via messenger, social media. And we have the second session to continue our forum, right? Yeah, to have access to the last session that's going to start like in a few minutes because Larissa told that they will be waiting a little bit. So please open the link and find the information about the passcode and the link for the last session because it will be in another Zoom session, not this one. Thank you. Thank you, Irina. My pleasure. Thank you. It was uh, interesting as usual. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.